All right, let's do it. I just took the Benelin, so that means that there's a 30-minute grace period between now and when this hellfire above my collarbone and below my eyes opens up again. So let's talk a little bit about a few Vancouver trends. I was in a Vancouver Canucks-related fan group chat yesterday, or not yesterday, I'm in it every day, but yesterday it was brought up in the group chat, holy hell, why the heck is Ryan Kessler trending in Vancouver. And so I was looking at it. I was like, okay, what is this? Ryan Kessler is a trend in Vancouver. Let's check it out. Oh, there's a TSN radio bit talking about it. Let's actually go over what it says here. So this whole Kessler thing that's been brought up amongst the Vancouver Canucks media is actually from boy genius himself, Harmon Dial, who is Somebody who a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans, I think, are familiar with. He started out with Canucks Army when he was like 13 or whatever, and he's my age too, so it's really crazy to see that he's now a full-time athletic writer. But Dial was on The Athletic, and he made an article talking about why an Erickson and Kessler swap makes sense. And it goes deeper than that. There's salary retained, there's another team involved, there's a really long explanation on the Athletic article, which I do not have access to because I don't have the Athletic. So I'm not going to talk about that here. I'm going to talk about what exactly the idea is he presented on the radio. Because he took his material from his Athletic article, talking about Kessler Erickson, a third team, and all the salary retained and other players everywhere, and he talked about it on TSN. So... I'm not going to go super in-depth with that because that's all Harmon stuff. If you want to actually listen to it, I'll leave a link in the description to the radio hit itself as well as the athletic article, but I want to talk about the basic idea here. Why Erickson and Kessler trading places actually does make sense if you take a look at it just based off of the cap and everything. And it makes sense because of the exact reason the David Clarkson trade to the Leafs made sense two days ago wherein the Leafs will take David Clarkson's five-something million dollars and put it on the LTIR. And by doing that, that will give them an extra five million dollars to spend for other players. That's essentially what we're going to do here if a Kessler deal gets done where Kessler comes to Vancouver. We already know that Kessler is never going to play an NHL game, or at least it's very likely that he's done in the league. He's at $6.875 million on the cap, and if you take this contract and you put it on LTIR, that means that the team that holds the contract will get the ability to spend an extra $6.875 million. This essentially means, I'm not saying it literally means, I'm saying essentially, if Kessler was on the Vancouver Canucks and they put him on LTIR, which is pretty much where he's going to go because he's not going to play, they will get the ability to spend an extra $6.875 million. It doesn't mean that their cap becomes lower. It doesn't mean that some of the money on their cap hits go away. It just means that they can spend more. And this is essentially what happens. It's not literally what happens, but essentially the Canucks can spend some more money if they get away from Louis Erickson's contract, they get Kessler's contract back, and they put it on the LTIR. So that's why... It makes sense. We're not saying that we're getting Kessler because we want him to come back and play at a 40 goal rate again. That's not going to happen. Kessler can't play. But the fact of the matter is he's got a big hefty contract and putting that on LTIR will allow the team to spend more money in a very legal, I guess, kind of way. And I say legal like that like with uncertainty because it is kind of fishy, but it is allowed under the rulebook, which is why the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to get an extra $10 million to spend by putting Horton and Clarkson on the injury reserve. So if the Vancouver Canucks are able to do that with Kessler, then it would be awesome. And it makes sense on the Anaheim point of view, because if you get rid of Kessler, who is a body who is not going to play, and you get Erickson in return, who is going to play, literally speaking, Erickson is a more valuable asset to a hockey team than Kessler, just based off of the simple fact that he can play. The Ducks have the ability to put Kessler on LTIR and spend that money as well, but they don't have the RFA situation that the Vancouver Canucks have with Besser, Pedersen, and Hughes going down the line. They are not strapped for cap, 
which is why a deal like this kind of makes sense. But as Harman talks about on his radio hit in his article, there is a lot more pieces that he feels need to go around in order to actually end up in a scenario where Kessler is on the Canucks. But on a very baseline level, this is the philosophy. Kessler comes over so we can bury his contract on LTIR and use the extra money, all while getting rid of Ericsson's contract. So that's pretty much it. I guess, um, go over to The Athletic if you have The Athletic and read Harman's article. I'm pretty sure it's good. Go over, listen to the TSN radio hit. I'll leave a link in the description to everything that Harman is talking about. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to go back to watching The Defenders and anime and laying in my bed and being antisocial and avoiding all my friends because I don't want them to get sick. Social.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.